Installing a Microsoft Cluster Server cluster in a virtual environment. This is a raw cell production. Here we're logging to Proxmox. As we look around here, we see the existing virtual machines on the left. And now we're going to create a new virtual machine. This one's going to be called SQL Serve 04. We're going to go to the OS tab and select Microsoft's Windows 7 2008 R2. Now we're going to select the ISO. Here I'm actually selecting the wrong ISO and we'll correct that a little bit later on here. <clears throat> number of cores, 4. Number of sockets, 2. We're letting KVM and Proxmox manage the memory by doing that, and, uh, by managing the processors uh, instead of uh, manually uh, configuring the number of processors. I found that it seems to work better. Here, the new virtual machine appears. Now we're going to create another virtual machine. This one is going to be called SQL Serve 05. And we're going to select the right ISO this time, which is Windows Server 2008 R2. We're going to select four cores and two sockets again. And we're going to give it 2048 meg of memory. We're going to select network here. We're not going to make any changes at all, and we're going to confirm and, and create the VM. In just a second, that one will appear while we're creating another one. This one's going to be called SQL Serve 06. We're creating three virtual machines for this cluster. And we select the right ISO there for the for the uh, Windows uh, Server 2008 R2, and let's give it 2,048 meg of memory, and we confirm it and finish. Now all three are created. So the next step is to start the virtual machines. Right click, click on Start. And before I do that, I have to uh, go and fix where on SQL Serve 04, I, before proceeding, I have to uh, select the right ISO file. So we're going to go to Hardware, we're going to select the, I, the ISO, and we're going to uh, CD-ROM, and we're going to select the right ISO there. So now we can start the virtual machines. One, two, three. All three machines are started. Now we're going to open the console so we can view those virtual machines. And we're going to work in them from now on for quite a while here. Here, you hear one of them is already booted. And setup is starting. This is doing the install of Windows Server 2008 R2. Here we're looking at the installation screen, the first installation screen. And we're going to click install. It's going to take a few seconds here, but uh, this will come up. And we're going to select the R2008 R2 Enterprise Full Installation Edition uh, for the cluster. Actually, two out of three nodes of the cluster, if you're doing a majority node cluster, are required to have Enterprise or Data Center. And the third one can be Standard. That's the majority node, uh, since this is just a ruling uh, node on the cluster. But here we're using all three for Data Center. I'm sorry, for the all three... Uh, enterprise editions uh, since that's what I have available. This is the disk space of the the hard drive that we added to the main system. This is not one of the cluster disks. This is just the main system disk install that we're, we're selecting. We're going to install three nodes in the cluster, 04, 05, and 06. We don't do this making clones and templates because with cluster service, uh, service there is uh, network errors that occur that require uh, some, some brain surgery to fix. Um, even though you're doing sysprep, it doesn't take care of them. Uh, so I try to avoid that, creating cluster servers and manually set up the cluster nodes. 
Here we're expanding the Windows file, so we're doing this in rapid, uh, a, ra a rapid fashion. Maybe 20 minutes or so later, you have three VMs installed. This is a little quicker than what VM where ESXi because of the slowness of ZFS right now. I'm not getting that much of a throughput on the ZFS file system, even though it's a RAID 10 uh, the configuration that I have, uh, RAID Z10. Um, that's uh, going to be cured in the next four or five months, uh, from what I understand, as they uh, optimize the VMF. I'm sorry, as they optimize the ZFS file system further and incorporate patches and stuff that are in the works now. It's slow, but it works. Here we're booting all the VMs. Uh, all three VMs are going to make it to the next dialog box, which is the login prompt. Uh, it'll ask for a username and password, which you type in twice. I would suggest using long passwords for production systems, over 17 digits, since now uh, anything less than that uh, within the next two years is going to be crackable using video cards. Um, so uh, it's best to use a long password with numbers, letters, symbols, digits, uh, upper and lowercase letters. Um, so you combine all four of those, upper and lowercase letters, numbers, and symbols, to create your passwords over 17 digits long. Here I'm not doing that because this is just a test environment which is not live anywhere. Now we're starting the three VMs and opening the consoles. We're going to go through and install all the updates. This is requires several reboots and lots of time to perform. We could use SMS or WSS, but I don't have that set up right now. The service packs are installed going, by going to control panel and doing a search for updates, enabling updates and searching for updates. You do this over and over again until it tells you there is no more updates. After you install several devices, you should recheck for updates relative to the packages such as SP1 for SQL Server, which you would install after installing SQL Server. Uh, through um, the uh, uh, the automatic updates. This is a new cluster. You don't have to worry too much about backwards compatibility with uh, the installation of the service pack. To warn you, the uh, .NET framework takes a long time. This is because the compilers are a single thread in Windows, unlike Linux, where you have multiple multiple threads uh, that you can spread over CPU cores. Um, and you actually even run them on video cards. Um, it's a single thread, so it does take some time to install. You're wondering what it's sitting there doing all the time, but it's actually just uh, it's just compiling the updates. Now we're going to install. We're finished here installing Service Pack One for S Server 2008 R2, and we're installing other updates that are appearing uh, as we do a searches for them. And we're going to do this over and over again, as I said, until they're all installed. Uh, the only ones I try to skip is the hardware-related uh, patches, because those tend to cause blue screens to death. Is the Microsoft versions I find to be less uh, good as the um, the uh, manufacturer's versions. We're, since we're doing virtual machines and things, we don't have to worry too much about uh, finding those uh, hardware-related service packs because there isn't any. With KVM and Proxmox, you actually um, you're, you're you're not adding uh, client client level uh, fixes to the the operating system. It's all done with the with, with what's detected. Uh, and as opposed to VMware where you install the client tools. Um, it's almost important to use templates and things like that, but it, with cluster server it's really not a recommended thing because with cluster server you uh, have um, problems with uh, the network card detection that uh, due to duplication that's not uh, taken care of by sysprep. Here we're installing the iSCSI initiator. We're going to do this on all three servers. Now, none of the uh, portals show up. Uh, none, of the, none of the looms will show up until after a reboot. I found this even if I do a network restart that they still don't show up. So I just try to take a few moments to reboot the servers after 
I, I go and install uh, the portal on all three servers. As you can see, see I was refreshing the servers uh, and uh, it, the loons did not show up. They're there and they're working. It's just something with iSCSI Initiator uh, for Microsoft requires a reboot. I'm going to try to investigate this further, but I, as of the time of this video, I could find no solution for that. So just a reboot takes care of that. Now we're in